We're in Guyana and we're going on a birding adventure. But before we do that, I'm taking on the local boys at cricket. I'm from South Africa, it's our national sport. We're gonna get their best batsmen in and I'm gonna bowl him out. Oh! That's a great shot. That's fine, four balls, and he's doing fine with a beamer. Yeah, I'm gonna try hand it back to you. Where are your bowlers, man? These guys are too good. I haven't managed to bowl him out and try my hand it back to you. That's a spin. The bat in the wall. All right, boys, who's going to get me out? I'm not going home until someone gets me out. Come on, Rasta. Oh, team bowling. Woo! With a full toss. Thanks, guys. Great playing cricket with you. We love Guyana. National sport is cricket. And that makes me love you guys even more. Right. Thanks so much for playing, guys. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you very much, Let's go betting. Ponies. Did you see that bird? And this is the perfect habitat for this bird. Yeah! That's what I call birding. Awesome! That's our golden bird. Welcome to Guyana. We're going to find some incredible subtropical birds, neotropical birds. This is going to be awesome. We've just flown in on Caribbean Airlines. We've landed in Georgetown, Guyana, and the adventure begins right now. Very few countries in South America do you get to experience such pristine rainforest. It's really going to be great learning a lot about the country, the people, the wildlife. It's not just about the birds, it's really about everything else that goes with it. I mean, the wildlife is spectacular. Having the opportunity to see giant river otters, black caiman, wonderful wildlife is really going to be a big part of this show. You know, I was always really excited to head down to Guyana to find the numerous parrot species that the country has to offer. On our journey through the country, we literally found dozens of parrots. I mean, we found everything from parrots to parakeets to parrotlets. There are over 28 species of parrots that have been recorded in Guyana. And one of the best places to view these parrots is right in the botanical gardens in Georgetown. We were amazed to find several different species feeding in one tree. Festive Amazons, yellow-crowned Amazons, orange-winged Amazons, all in one tree along with red-shouldered macaws. It was just spectacular. These gardens have so much to offer, and it really was a great introduction to the birds of Guyana. Got a red-shouldered macaw on the top of this tree here. There are five different species of macaw that have been recorded in these botanical gardens. This is one of the smallest species. What an amazing bird. Parrots are superbly adapted to feeding on nuts, and they've actually got bills which aren't detached to the forehead so they're able to exert heavy, heavy pressure with those thick bills and to husk nuts and to break them open. These red-shouldered macaws love this tree. It's an ite palm and they husk the fruit on this particular palm tree to get at the nut inside. Amazing red-shouldered macaws. There are three species of parrot in this tree right now. We've got an orange-winged Amazon, we've got a festive Amazon, and we've got the red-shouldered macaws all in one tree. They're feeding on the seeds of this tree, which is called by the locals a pinwheel tree. And it has got these wings on its seeds, which allow it to disperse by wind dispersal so that the seeds disperse far away from the parent tree. And what these parrots are doing is they're taking those wings off the seeds and eating those seeds. So these are the seed pods 
of this pinwheel tree. You can see how they've got the wings which allow them to rotate when they fall to the ground, but both of these have been eaten by the parrots. You can see how they've broken through the side just to get it a little husky seed in the middle. And this is what these Amazons are going wild for. Look at this parrot flying into the tree. Beautiful big Amazon parrot. This is one of the speciality birds of this particular park. It's called a festive Amazon. It's got a crimson red blotch on the front of its head. Bright, bright green parrot. Big Amazon. Very, very special birds. Now, Amazons have been targeted very, very heavily for the pet trade, and they are pretty much all over their range, threatened by habitat loss and by the cage trade. Great to see these birds still thriving in the middle of a city like Georgetown. That is one of the species here, Smooth Bilani. It's commonly known as the Jumbie bird. It's called Jumbie bird because Jumbies in local folklore are the spirits of the deceased. And it is believed that whenever these birds are around in large quantities, somebody has died or is about to die. So that is why it's called the Jumbie bird. I hope it's not us. It's just folklore, it's not actually true. It's just a belief that has been passed down from generation to generation. So no need for you to be worried. You'll get back in one piece. You know, there's something really fascinating about searching for rare birds and on the show, looking for some of the amazing parrots in Guyana, we're searching for a really, really rare species of parrots. One of the rarest birds in the world. And before we left Georgetown to embark on this amazing adventure and this great search, we decided to head up the coast a little bit to look for another fascinating little bird called a blood-colored woodpecker. And this woodpecker is endemic to the Guyanan Shield. It's found nowhere else in the world except for a narrow strip along the coast in this area. And we headed up to a place called Abari, a beautiful river that enters the ocean. And we looked for this little woodpecker and managed to find him fairly easily. Let's stop, here he is, guys right close to the ground, very close to the ground. He's working his way up that trunk. This is incredible, look how close he is. He's probably only, what, 12 feet from us over here. Look at that beautiful red back. Tiny little woodpecker, this is incredible. Right here, in this little mangrove forest here, we've got a blood-colored woodpecker. Yes, amazing little bird. Who said we didn't travel light? We've landed in Anai. Now Anai is the center point for us visiting a whole lot of other areas around this region. We flew in over pristine jungle. 80% of Guyana is covered in beautiful rainforest. Here we are, we've arrived at Anai at the Rockview Lodge, and look at this place. Hammocks, a cool swimming pool, beautiful beds, mosquito nets, paradise in the middle of endless tropical rainforest. Now this is what we're talking about, and this is really where our adventure begins. After Rockview, we embarked on a journey to look for our golden bird for this show that was something out of this world. It was incredibly grueling. What was supposed to be probably a five, six hour trip turned out to be an eight hour off-road adventure as we try to make our way to a little village called Karasabai. There were places where, I mean, the road was just non-existent. We were trying to find where the road was again and going over big boulders, down what we call in South Africa dongas, which are big dips and it was just an adventure of note trying to reach this little remote village. The journey along the way to Karasapai was really, really beautiful. These big open areas, reminiscent of the Serengeti or the Maasai Mara of Africa, where there were just plethoras of birds. I mean, we saw jabiru storks. There were lots of heron species. We saw snail kites, lots of different raptors, peregrine falcons. There were just birds everywhere. It was really, really great. And along the way, driving there, we were really in for a treat. As we were driving along the road, a giant anteater crossed in front of our vehicle. 
and I had the opportunity to get up close and personal with this amazing, amazing animal. We've just been driving along. We've got a giant anteater right here. The wind's blowing in our favor. I'm going to see if I can chase it and cut it off. There he is there. Jeepers, look at him go. He reminds me of an ambidextrous captain hook running through the grass. Their front claws are very sharp and hooked, and he uses them to tear into termite mounds. And let me tell you, you don't want to get too close to him lest he tears into you. Giant anteaters have a great sense of smell, which is not hard to imagine when you look at their noses, but they've got bad eyesight, which is why you can easily get close to them if you're quiet and on the right side of the wind. Guyana has got to be one of the best places to see this primitive beast. This is the largest anteater in the world. It can grow up to six, seven feet long, and it is one of the most endangered mammals in the world. There are less than 5,000 giant anteaters left, and we've just got up close and personal with one of them. This was a fantastic experience, and what a sideshow to birding. Birding's not just about the birds, but it's about the incredible wildlife of destinations like Guyana. After a six-hour drive, we finally arrived at Karasabai. This place is one of the remotest places I think I've ever been in my life. We're on the border of Brazil, along the Irang River, and we're here with our good friends, George, who, let me tell you, is one of the best 4x4 drivers I think I've ever met in my entire life. If there were prizes for four-wheel driving, this man would win it hands down every single time. We're with Sydney, who's been a great guide and a great host. Sydney's here to try and show us this really special parakeet along the river. And out of nowhere, they've rustled up us this amazing meal. We're eating bully beef or corned beef mixed with sardines and onions on crackers. Now that is just ingenuity at its best. At times like this, it is fun to see how you, you know, you, you, you're not uh, disappointed. You, even if there is disappointment there, you don't show it. You just uh, make us feel that things are working. And that's, that's the spirit when you go looking for birds. And it was a wonderful experience sitting down with these great guys, sharing a few coldies and some stories, and planning our exciting adventure the next day where we were going to search for our golden bird. Great company, great friends, great food, and great times. Thank you so much, man. And tomorrow the parrots. And tomorrow the parrots, yeah. Morning in Karasabai, and we're out to go now look for a very, very special bird. A bird that has been trapped extensively over the region. In fact, it has been extirpated from all of Guyana, except for this tiny little piece called Karasabai. Karasabai sits right on the border of Brazil, along the Irang River, and it's been a pleasure to meet with the Tushal of the village, who has welcomed us and who has explained to us how important it is to look after these birds and to prohibit trapping. And it really is heartening to see that this is a bottom-up initiative. This is an initiative from the village itself. It's not a directive from government. This is the village taking ownership of their own natural resources. And it's very heartening to see and it's going to be very, very important for the survival of this beautiful bird. It took us a long time to find these birds. I remember sitting, we got right to the end of pretty much as far as we were going to go up the river and still had not seen the birds anywhere. And I remember saying to Sydney, my goodness, Sydney, we've got up too late. You know, we've been delayed too much. There's no ways we're going to see these birds. If I know birding, you need to find them early in the morning. And Sydney said, no, just wait, let's give it another go. Let's wait here for a little while and then let's make our way back down the river. And as we started making our way back down the river, I'd already lost hope. I'm trying very hard to stay positive here. <laughs> Eventually, Sydney just shouted out, look, there's something down there. And we looked far in the distance and there were these bright, bright yellow birds flying in the distance on the forest and we found them. That was one of the most amazing experiences of my life, to find one of the rarest parrots in the world, the sun parakeet. Beautiful. 
Yes. Sun parakeet. Far away, but we've got them. I've always held a great fascination with chasing rare birds, trying to find rare birds around the world. And this was one of the best experiences I think I've ever had looking for a rare bird. Are they flying? They're coming here. They're coming here, guys. Not only because of the colour of these little sun parakeets, but also because of how long and the effort that it took for us to find these birds. We're trying to shoot these little parakeets from the boat, which is incredibly difficult. We've got a tripod positioned on the front of the boat. We're now going to try and get our cameraman onto land where we can set up the tripod and try and get better shots. These little parakeets tend to move around a lot. They're flying into one tree. They're never feeding in one tree for longer than five minutes. And then they're flying off to the next tree, working their way up the Ring River on the Brazilian side of Guyana. There's a nice flock of them. We've probably seen 20 sun parakeets right now. It's believed that there's possibly as few as a thousand birds left in the wild. That is 2% of the entire population that we're looking at right now in the wild. Very, very special. In recent years, they've had a drastic decline in their population. It's believed that there are probably only about a thousand sun parakeets left in the world. They've been extirpated from much of Guyana, much of the entire Guyana region in fact, and they're only found in little pockets in Brazil and along this particular river. These little birds have been extensively trapped for the pet trade. And they're more commonly known in the pet trade as the sun conure. They make great pets, are talkative and super friendly. And because sun conures in captivity in the US today are originally from Guyana, there is a chance that we can reintroduce some of these captive birds back into the wild. But let's hope that this is not necessary. It's been a drastic, drastic loss to have lost such a huge population of a bird that was once, 20 or 30 years ago, very, very common in this area. We've just seen the sun parakeet, our golden bird. And if there's any golden bird that really is golden, it is the sun parakeet. They just stand out like little gold specks against the green canopy. It has been an absolute privilege to get up close and personal with this stunning little parrot. It's a part of the Aratinga genus. Aratinga is the Latin word for small macaw or little macaw. And they do look like little golden macaws flitting in the forest canopy. It was quite a humbling experience sitting in a boat on the beautiful Irang River in one of the last known localities of this golden bird. Until very recently, sun parakeets were actually very common in the wild until they began disappearing right under the noses of conservationists and the very people that were there to protect these birds. But what has led to the downfall is probably even more astounding than their rapid decline. It was the legal trade in cage birds. They were considered to be so plentiful that they were legally exported from countries like Guyana to the US up until 1993 and in Europe until 2007. When the birds became economically extinct in Guyana, the trappers crossed the border to Brazil, a country that has barred export of wild birds. And they decided to catch the birds there in Brazil, then cross the border again back into Guyana, where the birds were so-called legally exported from Georgetown. What made this trip even more meaningful was that when we got back to Florida after our trip to Guyana, we started working with the World Parrot Trust, who are doing great work on rare parrots across the globe, including the sun parakeet. And they let us know that their recent research indicates that this is possibly the last flock of sun parakeets in the wild today. So while there may be as few as a thousand left in the wild, this figure could be as low as 80 birds left on earth in the wild. Is it too late for the sun parakeet? Let's hope not. I hope that Guyana can use this stunning golden bird to showcase its wonderfully intact nature and put an end to the short-term profits of the wildlife trade. A positive sign is the upgrading of sun parakeets to endangered status, both in Guyana and globally. And hopefully men like Elvis and the people of his village can secure the future 
of this wonderful golden bird for generations to come. Encourage people to watch the birds. Take out flames, look at our look at look, look at the beauty of the universe. Mm -hmm. But less prohibited, no trapping. You know, Guyana is synonymous with the legend of El Dorado, the lost city of gold. And although we didn't find any gold in Guyana, we did find a golden bird, the wonderful and beautiful sun parakeet.